So we have a question here from Jacob mentions that it's his first proper sales role. Um, regarding subject lines, I've recently had a good open rate, but a low reply rate. Do you have examples or ideas of subject lines that could help to get replies from those who have opened a message for follow-up emails? So I'm not sure, again, if this would fall in like the the subject line, if you're getting the opens or like what yeah, you can start I mean, to look at. If you're getting a good open rate, so controlling the, the variables, a reply rate, it's going to have to do with the body. Uh, it could be a bunch of different things. It could be, um, is your message relevant to the person that you're going after? Number one, right? Like, so is it, is it the right message? Is it the right person? And then also, is it the right, is it a, is it a good close? So I would want to look at those kinds of things first. Now, if somebody's opening up your email a bunch of times, like, I don't know that I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be really honest with you because it's not one tactic. What I tell my folks is if, so, if you are getting opens, like if someone's, especially if they're opening it multiple times, put them on a call list, blitz them. Right. And especially if they've mul answered it multiple times or if they open it multiple times, just respond straight back to that email, right? Like reply. And you can put something in there. That's like, Hey, um, either like either my, my, uh, email is horrendous and you're forwarding it along to everybody in the organization for how bad it is, or maybe there's something that's relevant. I hope it's the latter, right? But, and then you can restate your relevance for reaching back out to them and why you think it'd be like a, a worthwhile conversation to have. But I, I don't know that I, I, I kind of like don't want to get too caught up in like, if this subject line, then this, especially as I've seen over the past number of years, email effectiveness has plummeted. So it's it's much more about just using email as an intent signal, having the appropriate follow-up over email plus calls mm -hmm. in order to get, it doesn't really matter where you get the connect as long as you get the connect. Love it. Okay. So we've got a few more, so we're going to have to go kind of rapid fire. Elena asks, curious about how you decide what info to share in an in initial email versus what you withhold to try and get them into a call or in a meeting. Um, ooh, uh, so I'll show you with you what my framework is for a call and for an email. It's I have my intro, I have my relevance, my value proposition, and I have my call to action. That's what I share. And then I wait for them to respond right over the phone. So if it's over email, uh, so that's a, that's the first thing, right? So, um, then that being said, over email, you have a sequence, right? So your sequence is really going to be like a story. So if you think about um, the hero's journey, Joseph Campbell, his whole like uh, rite of passage the person has to take of like not knowing they have a problem and they get a call and they deny the problem. And then they're like, oh shit, now I got to go through all this stuff and got to get my magical powers and I come back and now I'm Harry Potter, right? That to me is what your sequence does. So like whatever that 12 step process to your hero's journey is, you don't put all of that in email one, you put it across like say six to seven emails over the course of 30 to 45 days. That shows a like, hey, like, so I'm going to have my, my hit on the top, but then over time, I'm going to maybe share some stories of, hey, I saw your company's doing this. Here's a case study of how this company did this and here are some of their results. Oh, by the way, here are some of the very specific features that they use. Oh, here's like a quote. Oh, by the way, here's like a different, like, you know, here's another guy that hits upon that so that you're telling, someone is taking on a story on your sequences. 